Who's exiting the JC next? Can we spot them and profit from them? Top 40 all time high closing on Wednesday. ShopRite versus Willie updates. Brent under pressure. Gold at highs. Powell says September rate cut on the table. Retail bonds down again. Hello and welcome to JC Direct, episode 597 for 1 September. My name is Simon Brown and this podcast is brought to you by JustOneLap.com. And, and, and let's kick off initially with that uh, statement from Jerome Powell. He essentially, so Wednesday evening, rates were left unchanged in the US. And then he came out and his press conference pretty much said, yeah, we are kind of ready to cut. And uh, rate cuts are on the table for September. So they, I think their meeting is 19 September. Uh, our MPC is uh, a week and a day then after that. He said it as clear as daylight. I, what we need is between now and then, and it's what, a little over six weeks away, we need some uh, uh, corresponding data to come through. Uh, inflation numbers look, must be looking better, kind of edging lower. Unemployment, a little bit higher would certainly help. But he said, Rate cuts are on the table for September. So here we are. And that's a biggie. And uh, I think many of us are eagerly awaiting that. As I said, we will then follow in September. We'll probably get in November. Worst case, our rates are down half a percent by the end of the year. Uh, And part of that, I suspect, is uh, thank you very much to Brent. Brent is uh, under pressure, I suppose, is the polite way of of saying it, uh, there's no, you know, no, no, no smoothing this one. Uh, Brent is looking under pressure, which tells a fairly simple story, right? The story it tells us is that global demand is just not really there. Let's make that a weekly chart. It tells us that 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 global growth is modest at best, and and I think modest is probably a fair assumption for that. We can see we have certainly had a bit of a bounce. Uh, we got down to 78 and change. It's bounced up on Thursday, now at 81.37. But that trend is uh, lower highs all the way back to, what's that, June of 2022, just after the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, uh, and then another little bit of a high, sort of November 22, uh, another one coming through September 23, April 24, and then July 24. We're getting lower highs. The support has been lurking around 72.50 at this point in time. We've got some chunky resistance at around 88 and some change. But I think that 72.50 is on the table. We've seen OPEC Plus trying to manage this, right? Uh, trying to cut production and help it. But that hasn't been working. Uh, Russia is pumping as much oil as they can, selling into India and China. That means that India and China, who would normally buy from other parties, are buying more from Russian oil. So uh, oil, to me, is looking bleak. And then on the on the flip side, we've got uh, gold. We've gotten gold, uh, which is trading up at all-time highs. Now, I typically track the futures price. This is the, the spot price, so not quite the same story. But we had that uh, uh, little triangle up there where consolidation, where gold has been consolidating. And what we can see, it, it has broken out. Let me fix that and make it look proper. Gold is definitely having a good week. It hasn't yet traded up to all-time highs, although it is on track for a closing high and the distinctions. One is it hits it but doesn't close up at that level. Where's the target from gold from here? I don't know. I mean, my target for the year was 2,500. We are less than a skip away from having that. I I don't know where our next target necessarily is. Uh, It's higher. That I think we do know. Of course, gold stocks are liking this. Uh, The gold ETFs are liking this. And it comes to the theory. So interest rates are coming down. Inflation has come down. What's the story for gold? Well, there's still a geopolitical issue. And we've spoken about central bank buying. We saw the Gold Council uh, Q2 report come out on, when was it? Mm, I think it came out, the 30th. And what they're saying is that, yes, central banks pulled back a bit of buying, but they're still in the market. And we've spoken about this before. You're a central banker. You've had a lot of U.S. dollar reserve. You saw what happened to the Russian dollar reserves when they invaded Ukraine. Frozen. You're suddenly saying, hmm, maybe we need something more physical. So the the, the central bank bankers remain in the market. The 
Asians continue to buy, uh, predominantly China, because their stock market is better, but their property market is a horror show. We even saw for uh, June there was some buying in Europe uh, from the uh, retail investors. That's you and I. So certainly the story is still there. And I'm not worried about interest rates and inflation coming down because uh, inflation will get to that target, 2% in the U.S., 45 in South Africa. That's all good and well. But it's not going to see interest rates come down to the sort of levels that we've had before. And there's still uncertainty and geopolitical risk in the world. We've still got the U.S. election in November. Uh, And and let's what happened. Remember what happened last time when Trump denied that he lost. Uh, Is he going to do that again? Well, if he loses, of course he is. Difference. He's not in the White House this time, so you didn't have to physically evict him. But, uh, you know, what happened in Jan 6th? Could we see another one of those? There is uncertainty. There is geopolitical risk out there. There are wars happening left, right, and center. I think gold certainly higher. I, I don't. I, I don't know how to make a target when something's at an all-time high. I know I just like holding at all-time highs because it is just that bullish psychology of I'll go and pay a price that no one has ever paid before. That is crazy bullish. So we've had a bunch of stocks delisting from the the JSC, I was was going to say over recent times, but actually over a lot of times recently, uh, over the last very many years. So I thought, let's go and see what stocks are out there that we could potentially uh, uh, have a look at that are delisting candidates. Now, you might be a delisting candidate. I still want you to be a great stock. There needs to be liquidity. I think in many cases, we might have some issues just around liquidity. Building a position might be hard. But here's what I did. I've done a, a, a search. I'm using my standard online share trading. I'm looking for dividend yield greater than zero. In other words, it pays a dividend. I'm looking for market capitalization below 5 billion rand. In other words, I want you to be a small stock. I'm looking for uh, the NAV price to be greater than 100. In other words, it's trading below its net asset value. I'm looking for price earnings less than 10. I want it cheap. And I'm looking for price earnings above zero. I want it profitable. Uh, So I throw that into the list. I ask it to do the search for me. uh, And we come up with, and now suddenly, there we go. We come up with 53 possible stocks. That's a it's a good chunky number. So we'll run through them. There's going to be a bunch of property here. I'm not so excited by that. Uh, Afrocentric. So was it Sunlum who's just taken a big slice in Afrocentric? I think they want to leave it listed. There is a benefit if you are a uh, uh, asset manager uh, like an Alexander Forbes or a Signia or a Medical Aid or something being listed on the JSC because it just gives massive transparency to your numbers. I think that's important. Uh, Africa Media, African Media Entertainment. I think quite possibly. I, I, I do think that's quite possibly. I think there's there's an option there for that to certainly happen. Uh, Argent, yes. Bola Metcalf, even more so. Bell, well, I'm glad Bell popped up because Bell is currently being delisted. So it makes sense. Blue Label, Telecoms. I mean, the other question we have to ask, I mean, for example, Bell Equipment is 4.7, uh, 4.8 billion rand. So there's a big chunk you've got to outlay. Of course, a lot of the folks who are current shareholders are going to hang on, the, 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 the Bell family, so they don't need that full, full point eight. But, uh, for example, an Argent is $1.2 billion. You've got to add some premium, so it's going to cost $1.5 billion. Bola Metcalf is $933 uh, million, so small. Baldwin, yeah, Baldwin has to be a candidate here. Caxton, I don't know that Terry Mormon would be thrilled to 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 delist it. I I, I think Caxton and Noah Colgro uh, a combined motor. So Colgro, I think yes, six hundred and fifty million market cap. I hold that stock. Uh, combined motor holdings, another one I hold a two point one market cap. What's also important here is a company like Combined Motor Holdings is throwing off a 13% dividend yield, which means if you've shelled out the $2.1 billion to, to buy the business, you're going to be getting almost $300 million in dividends every year to help pay down the debt. So that's why I want those dividends, and certainly a 13 dividend absolutely says possible. Uh, E-Media Holdings, DR, D, DRA Global, yeah. E-Media Holdings, 210? Yeah. And of course, HCR might be interested in that. Frontier Transport Holdings, also a possibility there. Uh, decent dividend yield of 6.2. E-Media's got a 10.4 dividend yield. Home Choice, absolutely. I, they, 
are a great little business. They do a 6% dividend yield. Market cap, call it 2.6.5, 2.7 billion rand. Liquidity there is just close to zero, absolutely close to zero. So the problem with something like Home Choice is getting into it. Um, but certainly this list is here and it's happening. Uh, in Simbi, maybe in Victor. In Victor. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 Kell Group, which used to be Carp Agri, Libstar, Lewis. I mean, Lewis has been listed forever and a day. The problem we were running into is that there's almost too many stocks. There's, you know, how do we even begin to try and, and, and pick here? Uh, Rex Trueform, absolutely. Uh, RB, uh, RH, rather, Bopela, again, they're in the, the hospital space. Mind you, it's hospital rather than medical aid. Uh, PrimeServe. Some of these stocks listed 20 years ago, and just pretty much nothing's happened. Uh, uh, Sopaku, uh, Sea Harvest, Santova, South, there's actually just too much here. There's actually just Transpaco, I, absolutely. So I'm going to tweak this and say I want a dividend yield of greater than zero, uh, but I'm actually going to say I want a dividend yield of greater than 5%, because that will then whittled me down from 50 odd that takes us to 25 one nice simple list so adcorp possible african media sure argent yes brimstone i don't think so they are essentially bee trust and they need to be listed uh, com- uh caxton no combined motor holdings i think so e-media sure frontier transport home choice yeah lewis mm, i'm not so sure about lewis mustech Yep, sure, don't see why not there. Novus Holdings, hadn't spotted that previously. 7.7 dividend yield. Um, Prime Serve and Transpacco. So what would I look at from this? Uh, African Media Entertainment, Argent, absolutely. Uh, Combined Motor, although they've been listed since 87. Uh, E-Media, uh, Frontier Transport, Home Choice, Mustech, uh, Prime Serve, Transpacco. It's nine stocks, though. I mean, yeah, is it worth putting, I don't know, taking a pile of money, dividing it nine ways, and putting a little bit into each of these? I already hold one of them. I'm not sure about that, but certainly, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to ponder. So now we have got a list, and it's got, you know, nine or ten stocks on it. How do we, do we go and take a stake in each of them? I mean, I suppose what we could say is, well, hang on a sec. Some of these are actually companies Worth owning on their own. Transpacco, absolutely worth having. Mustech, yeah, it's a bit of a box dropper. Uh, home choice, sure, but watch out for liquidity. Uh, Frontier, E-Media, sure and sure. Combined Motor, absolutely, why not? Argent, yeah, uh, like it. Uh, Adcorp, sure. So maybe it's actually only five, and we whittle that down. We take little stakes in it, and we say, is it possible that we potentially get the listings here? And the point is, is that we've got a decent company. It is paying us uh, a dividend. It's SA Inc., so it's going to get uplift in, in the SA Inc. story that we have at the moment. Remember my 3% GDP story from two weeks ago? So we're going to get that uplift, and then maybe one day someone swoops in with an offer at a nice chunky 30% premium. Uh, We have got an event coming up, as always. We have events every month. This one is uh, another uh, standard bank power hour. That was a close slip. Uh, It is going to be with Mishima Gama. She is, I rate, one of the top technical analysts in South Africa. She's absolutely brilliant at what she does. And we're talking technical analysis. And I've spoken about this before. We had the, the presentation I did, Trading as a Side Hustle, back in June. But I touched very lightly on technical analysis, uh, and now we're getting Mishima Gama to come in and do a lot more around that. I've been chatting with her around what's going to be in it. It's going to be excellent. She'll look at time frames. She'll look at some some uh, uh, chart patterns. She'll she'll look at stop losses, positioning at risk management, and everything. Just one lap dot com slash events for more information and booking. So let's go have a look at the uh, retailer, food retailer updates that have come through this week. There have been uh, two of them, and I kind of buried the lead there as well. While we're here, let's have a quick squiz at the J200, which is the top 40 index, uh, and it is trading at all-time highs. I want to show a daily chart, please. Um, This new charting is 
I, when it first arrived, I thought this looks nice, and now it's just actually stressing me more than anything else. No, I want to go daily, please. There we go. So trading all-time high. Uh, why aren't I showing what we've got today? Because it's still showing me a weekly chart even though it's promising me it is a daily chart. Okay, so we're going to look at a weekly chart. We've got an all-time closing high on Wednesday. We're going to take it with both hands. That is absolutely awesome. A long time coming. It also, we are slightly down. We are down 10-odd uh, points, which is 0.01%, as I record this on Thursday morning. But the short answer is our, stock, um, our, our, our market is strong. Our market is absolutely happening. And the, the the story going forward, and I'm not going to rehash it, but 3% GDP, uh, Government of National Unities, uh, ESCOM, suddenly got their, their reserve margin of safety back. Uh, it's looking good for 2025. Oil down at the sort of low 80s and perhaps going to the low 70s. All of this is a, is a good story. I also had a look at this chart over the last five years and an interesting observation Notwithstanding, there's a pandemic that happened in the last five years, because this, of course, will go back to August 2019. Our market's up some 50%, excluding dividends. Now, let's be clear, that is not by any stretch a NASDAQ, but it's still a, you know, we'll take it with both hands. So let's go to the uh, food retailers uh, and their updates. We had ShopRite, which is now trading at all-time highs up at 306 Rand. Uh, operational update for the 52 weeks ending suck. Uh, sorry, ending June. Why am I saying September? And there's some nuances in it. The key numbers for me, uh, like for like growth is 6.3%, inflation 58 In other words, they are growing volumes. And in previous updates, they hadn't been growing volumes. Broadly, 12% increase in revenue, 240 billion rand in sales, and and you know liquor sales up 20%. That's still going. I mean, we got the initial bounce, but that's certainly big. Here's what I'm really interested in. Which really, so they opened a lot of new stores, some shop routes, some use saves, some checkers, 71 liquor stores. But they also opened 63 of their new format stores. Uh, Pet Science added 33 stores to now be 86. Checkers Outdoor, 14 stores to a total of 22. I've never been to a Checkers Outdoor. I don't even know where there is one. I must find one. Unique Clothing by Checkers added 13 stores to 22. And Little Me, which I'd never heard of, but then I don't have little people in my life, three stores to a total of 12. I like this strategy by checkers. They can roll stuff out and see how it goes. And if, for example, the pet shop science is taking off and pets are big, they can go aggressive on it. And if it doesn't, they can just shut it down. Same with the outdoors, same with Unique, same with Little Me. They're big enough that they can try these concepts. And if they work, they can create an entire new sort of revenue line for them. Uh, and, and it can become significant in time to come. We're not going to get as many of these stores as we get the traditional checkers and shop right and even liquor stores, but this can become significant. And if it doesn't work, shut it down. Yeah, no harm, no foul. So absolutely uh, a, a good set of numbers from uh, shop right. The flip side of the equation was Woolies. The Woolies update for 53 weeks and I used to hold Willies and I mean just look at that chart of Willies five years it's basically flat uh, shop right over the same five year period has gone from uh, 140 to 300 more than doubled over the, 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 the period I mean just yeah so what 15 odd percent per year I used to hold both I still hold ShopRite. I no longer hold Woolies. And this trading statement kind of tells me why. So on a comparable store place, uh, store basis, sales up 6.9%. Price inflation, 7.9%. Yeah. So what does that tell you? It tells you that they're going backwards in terms of volumes. And this is what was happening to ShopRite, but isn't anymore. Uh, fashion <laughs> price move at 89 So they said we didn't have to do much discounting but sales down 1.3. HEPs is going to be down some 14% on a non-adjusted basis, 14 to 19%. Um, these are not great numbers. I mean, if we take the top end of that range, which is 3 Rand 64 uh, as the best HEPs that they can perhaps expect, even if we take the adjusted HEPs, which is 385, the market was looking for 405. 
this is a disappointing update. Now, yesterday, Woolies was at one point down 5% and then managed to close flat on the day. I suspect, and I was chatting with Skulk Lowe from PSG Old Oak this morning on my MoneyWeb show, and I suspect the story here is, you know, pick and pay, spa, shop right, all up for the year. Uh, Woolies not. And I think folks are saying, you know what? But Woolies down year to date. I think folks are saying, hmm, maybe there's finally some value here. But I got to say, let's be clear, that value is not roaring along in the share price. The, the, the value is uh, quite clearly hidden in terms of, of share price. It is not, it's not a great update, is absolutely the short answer. Not a great update by any stretch of imagination. Quick last thing, uh, we had RSA retail bonds are updating for uh, August. That came through this morning, um, and they are down. Again, they are down. So what have we got? The two years at 875, the three years at uh, 9%, and the five years at 1025. Back in June, this thing was 10 and 11 and a half, my bad. So my wife and I have got the one we took out initially in April 2020, 2020 at 11 and a half, reset at November 22 at 11 and a half, and reset in June at 11 and a half, now 1025. I don't know how these rates are going to go from here, here on out, but certainly those are linked to our respective two, three, and five year bonds, government bonds, and certainly we are seeing those yields come down there. So that is absolutely no surprise that we've got sort of more weakness, I suppose, is the polite way of saying it in those rates. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. And folks, give me ideas for what I can, where I can look while that thing plays out. It's important. It's true. Uh, but it feels weird because I'm never not quite sure where to look. Anyway, we're going to park it there until next week. Remember our event on the 22nd of August. If you're loving the show, please leave us an excellent review and an even excellenter rating in your podcatcher of choice. Until next week, my name is Simon. Look after yourself. If you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers all. <laughs>